Whoa, hold on there, Gladiator. We may have a challenger for the title of most yellow movie ever made. Ah, the days when Martin Lawrence got top billing over Will Smith. Hey man, what is this having a picnic sh in my car? The real question is, how long has Marcus had this obviously fast food burger in Mike's car? Did he buy it and save it for later? Did Mike go through the drive-thru and hand Marcus a burger without explaining his car rules? I'm married. That's what married means. It means you sleep together, but you can't get none. Movie presents this as a hilarious, unique observation, instead of a lazy rewrite of a joke Milton Burrow probably told. You gonna get that fry. There was considerably more than one fry to pick up. They make Mike seem like a really anal person by making the fries singular, but it was half a bag of fries that fell into the seat. Gee, I wonder where this movie takes pl- oh, thanks. I'm the decoy. Yes, you are. The plan is to kill this guy in a cop uniform, call it in, and the entire police station goes to investigate it. Luckily for the professional thieves, that is exactly what happens. Goddamn Taco's gonna kill me. Luckily for the professional thieves, Goddamn Taco is gonna kill him. <laughs> Luckily for the professional thieves, Goddamn Taco makes security guy fall asleep at the exact moment the monitors mess up. Move your ass, we got six minutes. They then proceed to do all this in six minutes. First off, orgy of evidence that there are kids in the house, and they take their shit into the parents' bedroom, and that's where it stays for some reason. Second off, in this shot, the toys are all on Marcus's side of the bed, and there's nothing but sensible mom things on her side. But when the kids run in, the signs have completely switched. Got that right, detective. This one two-second line is what Marg Helgenberger submitted for her CSI audition. Where were y'all last night, man? Listen, why don't y'all just have your cousins bring the shit back and we can all get some sleep? That's definitely racist. Your mama snorted up all the time. Oh. That is also racist. It's almost like this movie thinks racism is funny, so long as all the characters on screen laugh along with it. So they kill a decoy, it empties the station, very smart. Smart for them, I guess. Really stupid for the police station full of cops. But they don't kill a real cop because they know they had a whole force on their ass. I honestly don't understand how the entire police station empties. And after the first car gets there and verifies he's not a real cop, it takes 20 minutes for even a couple of cops to get back to the station and stumble on the heist. So they were called in the morning about the drugs getting stolen. They went to go talk to Michael Imperioli, and now it's mid-afternoon already. Oh, oh, oh. I tripped. Well, I guess the court will neglect the search warrant issue because of the I tripped clause in the law. That's scared white folks. You got the sound right there. We were wondering if we can borrow some brown sugar. Funny, that still sounds like a black guy trying to do a white voice to me. Two cops who just found a dead body and haven't even called it in yet start poking around on all the evidence with bare hands. Man, miss, I'm calling homicide. Now that I've contaminated half the crime scene. <laughs> Mike Lowry continues desecrating any and all actual evidence at this murder scene. I'm the first guy through the door and I'm always the last guy to leave the crime scene. This comment would play a lot better if you hadn't literally just bailed on a crime scene to let Homicide handle it. Bad boys, bad boys, what you gonna do? Here's the rarest of movie phenomena, a roll credits combined with a product placement. It'll be a quick $2,000. I've got plans with Julie. She's your roommate, right? Yeah. So bring her. Sure, bring your non-working girl best friend on a date with your John. That sounds like a normal thing to do. I'm an out-of-work photographer who doesn't know how to cook. But I am an excellent provider of clunky exposition. Ten minutes, we're out of here. What kind of prostituting do you do that will enable this statement to be true? I should have told you sooner about Eddie's private party. Question is, why did Eddie tell you about the private party at all? You look like a model in that dress. Will you model for me, Max? Because when I kill people, I need to do it in a theatrical way that makes no sense. Thank God the bathroom in the Capone suite was upstairs and practically a secret hideout, so that this chick could witness all the crime sh and allow the rest of the movie to happen. How does this in any way muffle a gunshot? Now it doesn't even matter if the gun is muffled, he's just shooting away without concern. Because once you kill the hot girl, witnesses can't hear gunshots anymore. Hey, somebody's up there! So let's alert her to the fact that I know that and give her a huge head start. Fun fact, it was clearly daytime five minutes ago, and they haven't been here that long. And here we are, it's night all of a sudden. Yeah, yeah, convenient pool. Do you know what the chances of surviving this jump are? I think I'd rather take my chances with bad guy aim than do this. Looks like we got two shades of lipstick over here, gentlemen. Tons of detectives in this place, and it took Narco Mike to come in here and find a clue a five-year-old would have been able to locate. No guns this time. They needed a huge sledgehammer for this job. Oh, All hold his on. Files are blocked. Hey, I don't give a damn about his personal files. The man's dead. Unblock it. Dead guy who is important in a drug case apparently can have blocked files when the head detectives are looking for information. Screw you, that's illegal. No, screw you. Are but, you talking to me? No, I'm not talking to no... It's a term you use, baby. Screw you is a, a cop term. Rather than simply telling his wife that he was talking to some asshole on another phone, Marcus decides to explain what screw you means, and it sets up this hilarious misunderstanding. Oh well, didn't bring a gun, so I can't kill him. Throwing him out the window is enough. I've just seen my best friend get murdered. And I'll only talk to Mike Lowry. What a bunch of bullshit. Also, if not for the dead roommate's seemingly innocuous comment about only trusting Mike Lowry, this murder witness might actually trust regular cops, or even cops that work directly with Mike Lowry. Instead, this movie has some hilarious identity swapping in store that you're just going to die for, so it's all worth it. It's Mike Lowry. 
He doesn't talk that way. Meanwhile, Julie is on the other end of the line, not saying a damn thing. I guess waiting for this argument, she apparently can't hear before she says anything. He misses a prime chance right here to say, okay, yes, I'm not Mike Lowry, but I am the only person around that wants to help you stay alive and take you to Mike Lowry. Instead, movie continues down terrible mistaken identity rabbit hole. Now we get the devil a bump and grind. <laughs> He's twice failed Mike Lowry test, yet this girl still goes on to trust him. You got a back door? Of course this apartment has a back door, because they need a back door. Okay, so they found the madam's house because Max had an address book that apparently had her illegal place of employment written down. Whatever. Are we now to believe that the whorehouse has addresses of all their call girls lying around? Or it was Max's address in her address book and the bad guys are only now showing up at this place? Wherever the f*** anybody is, all I see are shapes and a bunch of who cares. Well, this isn't the car won't start cliche, but it is a car deciding to screw the hero at the moment he or she needs it most. <laughs> yeah, okay, I understand we can see the license plate. It's up close and beautifully lit. That's the magic of movies, seeing license plates like this. However, this guy is not seeing the license plate like this. He's too far and it's too dark. Were those the guys who shot Max? What guys? All I saw were bullets. Um, you didn't see the f***ing bullets. No way! I told you I am not going into protective custody. Look, cops continue to allow witness to dictate how cops cop. Important witness. Marcus tells the doorman that there's an important witness in Mike's apartment, when that is precisely what you don't do, and he didn't need to do. You mind telling me where the hell you've been the last 12 hours? What? You didn't know? Mike clearly called for backup when he went into the madam's house, which means the police sirens we heard after he got smashed through the window was his backup, which means the story of his partner lying out in the yard should have gotten back to him pretty quickly. Also, after getting thrown through a window and probably staying overnight at a hospital, Mike gets taken directly to the police station instead of his house, where he would find out an important witness is staying. I had to sleep on my couch. I wake up this morning, I got a Power Ranger stuck up my ass. You are raising some f***ed up kids then. You don't know what I've been through. This whole scene is brought to you by people not telling people anything. Let's run it back. Marcus's wife kicked him out of the house because he stupidly talked on two phones at once and was unable to clear up an easy misunderstanding. Meanwhile, Mike gets thrown through a window and nobody tells Marcus about it the whole night. This makes it so Marcus doesn't know what happened to Mike and now we have a comedy scene. I told you to secure a witness, not to shoot up a neighborhood. Not once does Marcus ever say, I found the witness and then the bad guys came in and started shooting up the place. What choice did I have? Nope, not once, but hey, angry police captain scene is angry. Wait, wait a minute, what, what the hell is going on in here? Mike finally asks the question and no, the concussion doesn't matter. It sure isn't gonna matter to the movie in a few minutes anyway. You left it by herself? Our only f***ing witness? Yeah, I know. Pretty damn stupid. And he told the doorman about her too. But I don't understand why you don't know this already. Everybody wants to be like Mike. Yeah, and you're gonna be retired like him too. Oh, that must have been embarrassing when Michael Jordan returned to the Bulls on March 18th, 1995. And this movie came out a mere 20 days later. There's too much moisture down here. This is why you don't set up drug labs on docked sea vessels. As usual, Michael Bay doesn't give a shit how you see the product, just that you see it there. Air Jordan's kids, not being worn, on a table. Hey Mike, who's the guy in all the photographs? Mike has tons of incriminating photos of himself all over the house, because of course he does. I thought that, you know, I thought that maybe you were gay. Sure, but wouldn't there be a picture of both Marcus and Mike on this thing? This whole scene is set up so that Marcus can deny he's gay, and man, is that hilarious. So he steps to the door. Boom! Freeze! Miami PD! Mike describes a story that is already better than this movie. You got it easy compared to me living in that, that zoo you call home. The last time we saw Mike, he was regaling the kids with a story about a drug bust and having the best time of his life. And somehow that translates into a bad experience. If he had one, we didn't see it. But I guess that time needed to be filled with how baloney is made and dog shitting on carpets. Why would Mike need to call Marcus's wife during work hours at the office away from the witness? Marcus would make this call. This is f***ing stupid. Oh, no, don't wait up, don't wait up, I'll be out. Phone plays a dial tone after someone hangs up cliche. This Eddie Dominguez file cannot be that hard to get into. Why hasn't Mike asked his captain to unlock the file? Or any higher ups? How can you be denied these important files during an investigation? What's up, Chad? Hey, Mr. Lowry. Chad. Hey, Mr. Lowry. Okay. The Lowry brothers. This asshole knows that Marcus is not Mr. Lowry. Remember this? Detective Burnett. So even if Chet was told to call Marcus Mr. Lowry, he shouldn't be the least bit confused. He knows the entire situation. So this, again, is comedy that comes from a place that makes zero sense. Oh, Mike. You ever get the sense this script started out as an episode of Frasier? Then they added a deadly serious drug heist to it and didn't see why that was a problem? Does Mike's f buddy usually show up unannounced while he's on duty? Didn't we hear her on the answering machine a minute ago, which was a call Mike never returned because it wasn't there? Not to mention that f***ing doorman Chet isn't doing his job, is he? Does it sway you one way or another to find out, like I just did, that Taya Leone was in an episode of Frasier this very same year? Yvette is a masseuse. She massages sh**. And? Did you think you were going to be able to get a rub and tug while your star witness is in the apartment? Again, Mike is a character who is nothing but clueless the whole time. I can't believe this dude always wanted to be a cop. She was naked? Titties were out a little bit. Nope, not even a little bit. You threw Yvette out naked? 
This identity ruse is still happening. Club Hell, eh? Screenplay by Rob R. Literal. Important shipment of ether comes during Club Hell's busy-ass night shift, with tons of witnesses and delivery complications, not to mention convenience for the plot. How did either of the two main characters in this movie think this obvious gun stash was going to go unnoticed by the cabin fever witness? Noah, I remember you. Fuck. Seriously, f*** this movie. It won't have the sin count to show for it, but this movie is one of the worst. Stupid girl with stupid revenge idea is really f***ing stupid. We're standing out front arguing like a couple of schoolgirls. What do you say we put an end to all this bickering, huh? Screenwriter's own argument about these characters ends up in the screenplay. Can you stay focused? Screenwriter's argument with the director ends up in the screenplay. Also, f*** me. Is this how things are done in the cop world? There's a major suspect from an unheard of police station heist in this club right now. Only two cops come into this crowded club to arrest a guy with a terribly violent rap sheet. Meanwhile, said department will send entire police force when one supposed cop gets shot. Movie expects me to believe bad guy, who is probably drunk and who only saw this guy once from a distance, is able to spot Marcus in this crowded-ass club. I know this place is called Club Hell, but I still don't think it's wise or up to fire code standards to have this many f***ing unattended candles in the bathroom. What's up, motherfucker? Cop fails at proper copy. Also, bad guys fail at proper bad guy. Their idea was to put a plastic bag over his head? Why didn't biker dude have a knife of his own? Wait, there's a view into the men's restroom through the fish tank at the bar? I mean... Damn! Right there! Damn, this dude has f***ing cat eyes. How the hell is he so f***ing observant? Oh, this is good! No one's chasing us! How the f*** do you know that by simply looking at this car in the dark during a high-speed chase? What am I smelling? Ether. Extremely flammable ether. Again, tonight of all nights, how many days per month on average is there even a need for an ether delivery truck? This is protective custody? Oh, whoa, 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 lady. First of all, you refused protective custody and demanded to stay at Lowry's apartment. Second of all, you then left that sanctuary to go to the club on a killing spree. So you are in no position to pitch to anyone right now about anything. Weird, much like Speed, they're going to drive on a road that eventually runs out. Also, much like Speed, the same composer is basically playing the same theme music in this movie. This movie should have been called The Star of the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air and The Star of Martin Yell at Each Other Constantly and Waste Everyone's Time. It goes only lead to the door. How is Club Hell not still a viable lead, considering all the shit that went down and you were there for five damn minutes? This action news helicopter captures three people involved in a big explosion on a closed road, and somehow they'll either walk or drive back down this road where this happened right behind them, retrieve Marcus's car from the club, and get all the way to this gas station without anybody noticing them. And there's nothing, absolutely nothing, more important to Mike than doing this guy that killed Max. This identity switch farce is still going on. I thought he was supposed to be the smooth one. And she's still falling for it, too. Sure, why not? This movie should waste more time with this nervous store clerk. Because it's just a movie, am I right, lazy anti-critics? Oh, come on, Mike. Mike, put it back in! I cannot believe you took it out! Ha ha, hilarious out-of-context dialogue. But honestly, if that was really happening, who would answer the phone? If Marcus waits five seconds, this gets cleared up easily. But honestly, why does it even need to be cleared up? I don't think this is legal. It's not. It's also stupid as hell, considering the bad guys are potentially watching this house or this car. But whatever, plot must go on, I guess. Now, at a total dead end in the story with the witness killed, the bad guys decide tonight is the night to go to Marcus's house and stake it out, which just happens to be the night that he thinks Mike is banging his wife. So when he shows up, a series of events leads to more bad guys getting caught, and the plot can happen again. Yeah, that's a broken neck right there. Here's Marcus, again, leaving his witness vulnerable to attack and unable to flee. So, this is a stakeout. Not what I imagined. Why? Every cop show and movie for 40 years has accurately depicted the monotony of stakeouts. Where did you get any other impression? There he is! There he is! You guys were waiting for him to show back up last night. You're still awake eating Twizzlers. So when did you miss his car coming home? Hey, this is real cop stuff. Okay, this is not Charlie's Angels. That's racist. She can't hurt for her to take a peek. How is this guy a cop? Worst cops ever continue to be horrible. We'll somehow win in the end. Bad guy just happens to be monitoring for spies and spots our heroes. And despite the fact that Mike saw him looking straight at the hiding place holding his own binoculars, he still let Julie have the binoculars and risk everything. Okay, standing on a trestle near the River Drive and 34th Street's intersection was captured two nights ago by our Six Action News team. But wasn't newsworthy for two whole days until just now. This Marcus yells at the helicopter scene didn't happen. In fact, this so didn't happen, it's like studying every frame of the Zapruder film for 35 years. And then one day you happen to see Lee Harvey Oswald whitewater rafting through Dealey Plaza while holding an iPhone. Bullets, guns, handcuffs, and the key to handcuffs continue to sit in an unlockable cabinet like clean dishes at your house. She's so mad she left her two elementary school boys at home alone to come bitch out Marcus. Out of here. Should we check Bring out. my veggie okay. burger? Yes, I'm here to kill my husband, Marcus Burnett. And that'd be the tall one or the short one? Dumbest person ever. 
Hilarious scene of marital discord, which is entirely avoidable if Marcus just says the witness thought I was Mike, and the boss made me continue being Mike right now. Or just tells his wife the truth in the beginning. Jesus. If his wife could find us, I'm a lot better off on my own. You already knew that you were staying at Mike Lowry's apartment, a place that his partner's wife would definitely know about. Baby, she's a material witness. Talk about burying the lead. This scene has five people shooting guns and no one hits anything they aim at the entire time. Someone dives, someone's shooting at this place, someone is here, that guy, this flip, smoke, things, distractions. This victim kidnapping brought to you solely because of the stretch-thin identity swamp bullshit reveal coming when it did. And by the way, where is her goddamn veggie burger? Okay, so in order to get rid of the one witness to the hooker's murder, you go shoot up an apartment lobby that has security cameras in it and kidnap said witness on camera? How does this help you, legally speaking? Is he really going to catch up to the car by running? Hell, they could have outrun Mike just by obeying the traffic laws, but for some reason they really needed to get out of there and wreck every car in existence. Why haven't they killed her yet? What are they waiting for? They're willing to kidnap her in broad daylight with witnesses and a film record of the event, but are waiting to kill her for some reason? The f Thankfully, this Miami chase takes place in Atlanta traffic, so the bad guys keep hitting cars stuck in traffic to give Will Smith time to keep up. Michael Bay Dutch angles the sh out of this running shot. This, of course, after giving us all the Dutch oven for the whole movie. What the f just happened? Mike was outside, round in the corner, and then this asshole outside shows up and shoots at him inside? The movie just flipped dimensions in logic, and they made an old dude not even in the chase suddenly appear. I am certain that this dude's existence is merely a hypothesis that doesn't have enough empirical evidence to become a theory yet. These basketball gods came in riding machines to literally become the deus's ex machinas the chase needed. Shooting the tires out would have been easier and safer. Ah, movies where no one inside the car who ever shoots through the roof at the guy on top of the car actually aims at the center of the roof. Fresh Prince ex machina. Slow motion regret. I'm keeping your sweet little friend for four hours until I make my deal. For no reason. I just put a bullet in the chemist. You f with my timetable. Also, all that ether that got blown up didn't help either. But I blame the chemist more than the driver of you guys for that. The other one is for the girl. Okay. Son of a bitch! Wait, that bad guy called just to taunt the cops? I finally got the authority to shut you down. As of today, you're all reassigned. Somehow you weren't fired. Yep, you nearly have to be Inspector Gadget incompetent to get fired off the Miami police force. Also, thank God the unnecessary internal affairs subplot finally pays off. A prisoner is openly hacking a computer inside of a police department for guys who just got reassigned on a case. Okay, so they couldn't access the file because she had something to hide. But I'm still trying to figure out why they didn't get somebody to legally do this in the first place. Surely a judge or somebody higher up could have opened this thing a long time ago without her help. This is one of the most important parts of their case. And they sat and argued about bullshit for nearly an hour and a half instead of pursuing it. Also, why isn't she dead? They had no qualms about killing the guy who helped him with the ventilation plans. You have such sexy years, you know that? Is that why you kept her alive? To tell her that? I still don't understand how her being alive right now helps you in any way. You assholes might actually be even stupider than she is. Well, this is real. We got something for you. Let's go. Ah, uh, let that be a lesson to you. Even racist rivals can find a way to work together when a white girl's life is in the balance. I need a SWAT team, helicopters. We're calling all cars here, baby. Only I don't know where I need them. Then didn't you call a bit too soon then? Does it make any sense to have them drive and fly in any direction until you know where you need them? You know what, I bet you it's up in the old hangar section. What an incredibly insightful, correct assumption. What do you got, an itch? I'd love to scratch it. All bad guys are rapists, or at least pretty damn close. Sure, they keep barrels of ether here at the airport where the bad guys decided to make the deal. Why not? Even though the ether is supposed to be in the lab where they cut the dope. They keep stores of it here for pretty much no reason I can think of. Here's where Michael Bay honed his particular brand of obscenely incomprehensible action sequences. Yes, dive behind the propane tank. You smart good. The one guy they don't give a gun is the one guy who could've killed Mike. You forgot your boarding pass! Rejected lines included, keep your tray tables in the upright position, and your seat cushions can be used as a flotation device. And always bet on black. With the sheer amount of electricity, explosions, fire, bullets, and other hazardous materials around this place, everyone who even looks at it should be dead. I'm calling bullshit on him catching up to this car by running and jumping. Bull shit. And Michael Bay was born. Entire movie comes down to dick measuring drag race. They're this close to the wall, but it now takes 10 seconds of spinning before the bad guy's car hits the wall. This guy is dead. I don't care what he does right before my eyes, what it says in the screenplay. This guy is dead. You cannot survive that wreck. You definitely aren't walking or possessing a torso. It ain't even worth killing, man. You guys just played chicken with him driving 200 miles an hour toward a concrete wall. And he lived, which means this guy is the most worth killing son of a bitch I have ever seen. He is clearly a zombie, and it's against God not to kill him. Bad guy gives good guy a morally justified reason to kill him cliche. Also, these horrible cops continue to be horrible and didn't make sure to handcuff this guy or search for more weapons. As of today, you're all reassigned.
everything on this planet has evolved to kill humans. Uncle Mike's in the house. The champ is here. The champ is here. I have made a series of very bad decisions, and I cannot make another one. Why did you make these decisions? For the good of my family. You want badgers, mother bitch? Badgers? Badgers? We don't need no stinking badgers! All I know is his name. Give me his name. Kaiser Soze. I I'm just an errand boy. Sent by grocery clerks to collect a bill. That's Rick. I thought, I thought I am, um, you said, you want to start. drink now? Okay, I'll bring it for you. Yeah. My always works sometimes. 60% of the time, it works every time. Hey everybody, if you have an interest in a book about disabled superhero kids, I just happen to write something like that. And you can now pre-order the ebook version. The audiobook is coming soon as well.